Okay, I'm here to speak about two things. Uh, one is Orbiter, and I'm using this project as a, a showcase to understand how we can uh, improve Docker's world and how we can use the Docker API to build a system that controls Docker to do something else. That's the idea. Uh, it, it, because Docker doesn't provide just the ability to deploy containers, to uh, deploy application in an easy way, but it provides also a different way to interact with the daemon itself and you can add capability to Docker. In um, Orbiter uh, itself, uh, in this case, is an autoscaler. Uh, if you know how Docker, Docker Swarm works, uh, Docker Swarm is the orchestrator level on top of Docker. From Docker 1.12, uh, it's embedded in the Docker itself, and it means that you can run containers locally, but also you can join Docker um, daemon in a cluster, more than one node, and you can deploy container in one in one in more than one node. Uh, the idea, the, the big idea around Docker Swarm is that you have uh, it's trying to simulate one big node, but in reality you have more than one node, and you are edge available, and you are deploying your application in uh, in a cluster, and it like it can be like sort of competitor for Kubernetes uh, is doing the same things, is trying to orchestrate orchestrate container in more than one servers. Um, it doesn't have, Zwar doesn't have an um, orchestrator capability and uh, I decided to build one. Uh, I'm, I'm Gianluca Rezzano and that Gerard is my Twitter and my GitHub handler if you are interested to know what I'm doing. Uh, at the moment, I'm working in uh, Influx Data, the company that provides InfluxDB and uh, all the tick stack. And I'm building clouds because I'm building the cloud services that our customers are using to uh, have InfluxDB as a service. <coughs> Why I did Orbiter? Inf the, the main idea was to build a mm, use case around metrics. Uh, I was working in InfluxDB and we are managing metrics from CPU, from your application, from everywhere. And uh, we was looking for a use case between Docker and InfluxDB. And I saw that Docker Swarm was not able to autoscale services. And we just decided to try to do that. Uh, Docker Swarm at the moment is not like handling uh, autoscaling and for me it was a gap that I was able to fit, or at least try to fit, and uh, I create Orbiter. Um, and also to try the Docker API and to see how to extend uh, Docker itself. At the beginning, Orbiter was a general purpose multi-vendor outscatter super cool, but uh, during the development we just realized that that was too much. Uh, with multi vendor, the multi vendor purpose came when I was thinking about that uh, nice abstraction to uh, integrate more than one provider, maybe AWS, maybe DigitalOcean, maybe Docker's World. But at some at some point, I realized that it was too much, and uh, Orbiter just became a uh, Docker's World autoscaler. It means it means that it's not going to autoscale your cluster. It's not going to create. Uh, AC2 or servers, it's just going to uh, scale up and down the number of containers that you are running for a specific services, uh, for a specific service. Just to, I don't know how many of you know about Docker Swarm, but the main concept that um, you will see if you go home and look for Docker Swarm, um, the main one is uh, the concept of service, where well, the main one is, is the cluster. And every cluster has two kinds of nodes, Two kind of servers. One is the manager, and the other are the node, the, the slaves, um, manager and slaves, or workers. Workers, workers. No, and workers. Uh, the managers are the brain of the server, of the server, and uh, they handle all the update and creation um, actions, and uh, they dispatch this command to the, all the workers. And uh, that, that's it. Um, you can deploy services. And uh, you can see a service uh, has a um, group of containers. Every container is not called containers because it was too easy, but they are called tasks. They are not, they are not called containers because ideally Swarm works with containers, but tomorrow you can implement your 
uh, ACHU runner and you can run ACHU in the same way. And your task is not going to be a container anymore, but it's going to be a ACHU. That's the main idea why it's called tasks and not today. Um, yeah, what, like auto scaling is pretty simple. It works in this way. You have uh, your application, your swarm cluster, uh, everything, every image is a node. And uh, we have the manager and uh, the workers. We can have more than one of both, but in this example, we have two, two nodes and two workers and one manager, uh, one master. Um, in the master, you deploy Orbiter. Orbiter is the application that I'm going to share uh, later. Um, Auto scaling is ba is based on metrics. You cannot auto scale your application without understanding how it's behaving. Uh, usually, uh, with auto scaling, I mean, uh, let's let's say that you have five containers, but a lot of traffic is going on in your application. Is going into your application, and uh, all your, for example, you're going full of CPU in your five containers, and you need to deploy other two containers. Uh, you can do that manually. You can call Docker Swarm and ask him to replicate and add two tasks. But it's something that you can also do in, uh, in automation, and that's what, what I mean with auto scaling. Uh, you cannot auto scale without uh, metrics. To get the metrics out from your application and out from your cluster, you can use tools like C Advisor or Telegraph, or you can build your own tool. Uh, I advise you to look at for C Advisor and Telegraph. Uh, they have two collectors that are able to take information out from no, uh, from Docker and from other services. And uh, now that you have all the information and all the metrics, you need to store the metrics in some place. Um, InfluxDB can be one solution, Prometheus can be another one. You can do whatever you want in this case. And uh, you also need a way to trigger the alert. Uh, let's say that the same example as before, you are storing, you are taking the CPU information <coughs> from all these containers and you are storing them to InfluxDB, but to build automation you need a system that is reading that matrix and is and, and, and it's able to understand um, if there is a spike in traffic and it's spiking the CPU usage and how to uh, fix the problem. And uh, I call this process alert. Uh, you can build as before, your custom uh, project that is following metrics in the in your um, time series database, or you can use Capacitor if you're using InfluxDB. Capacitor is an alert manager, and you can configure it to listen on some particular query, and it can trigger. Um, you, you you can trigger different kind of event. You can notify in Slack or PagerDuty, or you can. Uh, in in my case, I'm using. Uh, the URL kind of, uh, I'm, I'm making a get to Orbiter and I'm going, and uh, my capacitor is uh, saying, Orbiter, I need to like, auto scale this service because it's out of CPU. Or if you are in the Prometheus kind of uh, environment, uh, Prometheus has an alert manager that works in the same, similar to capacitor or just getting information from Prometheus and making action. Why Docker Swarm doesn't have scaling? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I can suppose these, these two things. Um, in first, because we saw before that the architecture to build up scaling is quite big. Uh, or Swarm at the moment is, is the scheduler, is the orchestrator. He knows how to deploy containers and, and where to put them in a cluster, but it's not collecting um, Measurement or metrics, uh, like it's, it's providing you an API to get metrics, but it's not like handling them. And uh, to make auto scaling swarm, need to have a time series database and have an alert manager and these kind of things. Probably not something that we are going to have soon, and uh, that's why I think that Orbiter has some room at the moment. But I think at, at some point, Docker Swarm will be able to handle auto scaling without Orbiter. As I said before, it started as a general purpose software, but uh, I removed some code. I'm removing some code, yeah, um, to make it just for Swarm. And uh, I decided to do that because um, to make it simple, 
now you can deploy Arbiter as a container and it looks for uh, the socket in the Docker socket and it, it brings all the information and keeps stuff in Cinch by itself because it knows how to interact with the uh, well inter how to build up a uh, good interaction with Docker and uh, it's something that you cannot do in the same way if you are trying to manage more than one provider or if you have an abstraction layer uh, small. I also remove that to remove abstra uh, abstraction because I'm not really interested to support a lot of stuff and to make Orbiter too big. I just realized that Docker Swarm was looking for an auto scatter, not not digital ocean or uh, Amazon, Amazon in my case. And because less is more now and we need to remove it. <coughs> How it works? It's very simple. As as I said before, in your Docker Swarm you deploy services. It means that you have a list of services, and uh, when you deploy a service, you can attach labels in the same way that you do for a lot of things in Docker. Uh, your service can have labels. If you deploy a service with the label Orbiter equals true, it means that Orbiter can interact with the service. And uh, when you start Orbiter, it, it's looking, it's reading all the services that you're running, and if they contain this. Uh, this label is going to provide you a handler like this. This is your IP, this is the port, and you can. It's very simple. Let's say that your uh, service is called Staff Micro, and you can. You have two rules that you can use up and down. When you call up, you are increasing the number of services, the number of tasks. If you are calling down, you are decreasing the number of services. In this case, you are scaling up or scaling down. <coughs> it uses the Docker Swarm API to keep in sync the number of services that you are deploying, if you deploy, and uh, the number of services that you are handling. What what it means means that if you, if you are deploying a new stack and you are creating ten new services, Orbiter is able to uh, search for them. He, he detects that there are new services and he can add new services in uh, Orbiter. There are other labels that you can use to configure um, Orbiter. If your service, other than Orbiter through, implements uh, Orbiter up and Orbiter down, these labels are configuring the number of tasks to increase up three, and the number of tasks to decrease two in this case, when you're scaling down. Uh, the cooldown period is, is the time between two uh, scale. Uh, if you scale, in, in this case, for example, it's two seconds. It means that if you, if Orbiter receives two scaling action in less than two seconds, it's going to uh, deploy, it's to scale the first time, but not the second. Uh, the idea is that sometimes, probably your your HAL manager, it's sending too many alerts, too, too many alerts, and Orbiter doesn't need to catch all of them. There is a quiet period that you can call. Um, as I said, like, if, if you look at the README now, I, I will show you the README uh, in the project. Now it looks really simple, like everything works with label, you don't need configuration file, uh, you don't need to call API to add services, everything is clean and easy. Uh, before, when I, when I started to design Arbiter, I had my big ML file with all my configuration, all the, autos, all the service that I need to catch, the provider if they are... Uh, in Docker Swarm, or if they are in DigitalOcean, or things like that. Uh, I just remove everything, and uh, everything works with label. You, the, the unique requirement is to deploy um, Orbiter in, in the manager. It's not that, like, it's a requirement now because nobody <coughs> thinks me about make it runnable outside of the manager. Uh, but when you, like, I need to have, we need to have Orbiter in a manager because we are persisting update in a, in a service. We are, like the API is using the update command to increase the number of tasks or decrease the number of tasks. And that particular API, it's um, like we, we can do that API only in the manager because the worker only take information and dispatch action. They are not able to update. That's why we, uh, 
to run arbitrary master. The deploy is very simple. Uh, if you this is a Docker compose stack file, and uh, it's that yeah, very simple. The, the unique particular point that you need to remember is the you need to share the volume the the Docker socket because as I said before you we need to speak with the Docker um, demo itself. Mm -hmm. And second is that you need to uh, use constraints to deploy the um, container inside the manager because we need to speak with the manager. The other things are pretty standard, there are boards, command and uh, the image is the uh, general orbiter is available in Docker Hub, means that you can use it. Uh, I will not take it for you. As, like, as I said, I'm not just here to present how I build Orbiter, like why I build Orbiter, but also how I build it. And uh, it's a Go project that uses uh, the Docker API, the Docker Go client, to run the API. As you can see, I have the concept, still the concept of provider because in my brain I was doing something really complex, but I'm going to remove this at some point. Because I don't need a provider anymore, my provider will be always the first word. Um, I start a new client. The, I'm using the Docker is the SDK, Docker SDK, uh, official Docker SDK, and I'm using the com the command new amp client. The new amp client uh, is the command that initializes the Docker CLI and it looks for local environment variable. It means that if you need to point Orbiter to speak with uh, some different entry point and not the local one, you can use uh, Docker host and Docker API version and all the other environment variables that you usually use, for example, with Docker machine. It's a standard way to configure the cloud. Other Docker-like tools are using the same um, concept. Another thing that I need to, um, to do in, in uh, Orbiter is I need to find the old, um, <coughs> I need to find the service that I'm going to scale. Uh, and uh, this is the client that you, the, the call that you should do, service inspect with row. I had this instant default rule, and one of the contributors had this rule because Docker has a problem in, in the last uh, SDK release that broke pretty much a lot of, not all, but a lot of integration uh, because the output of the code was different and uh, that fix is to make it compliant. It's temporary, we are going to remove it as soon as they fix it. Um, and the other code, like now, now that we have the specific service that I'm, I'm scaling, the, I need to take all the tasks for that service and uh, I need to understand if the uh, scale request uh, is acceptable. It's just a bunch of uh, if, and I didn't um, copy them here, but I'm just looking how many tasks are running, how many tasks are stopped, how many tasks are not, are not working, because I'm going to have the, num the number, the, the, the target number, for example, this one is the, the number of tasks. This is the target, let's say that I'm going to, from three to five, target is five, and the direction is half. It means that you need to have five uh, direction half containers. And uh, is acceptable is just looking for the running container and counting. Uh, yes, at this point we need to add the, the number of target container to the base container. The base containers are the number of active tasks that are, are running now in your cluster, we need to increase if the direction is true or decrease if it's false. And uh, at, some, at this point we have the new specification and we can update our service. Um, Docker's work works in this way. You have a specification and this, the specification is the desired state that you are looking to have in your cluster. Let's say that you are deploying Nginx as a, servi uh, as a service and you have in you are happy to have five containers. That one, that this one is your spec. But your desired, desired, your current stack can be different because for some problem you can have only three containers running, uh, maybe because your cluster is full or because I don't know why. Um, and 
Swarm, Swarm is always trying to keep the desired state. And the, the spec is the desired state. There is another piece of um, code that is interesting and is the background job that is uh, keeping in sync um, services that have the orbiter through um, label and uh, all the services that you deploy. This, um, this is a go routine that is running every three seconds, I think, and is checking for the service list, uh, for the number of services, and is checking if, the, if there are new services that have the label arbiter through, or, or if, there are service, if there are less services, because maybe you remove some service. And some services. And uh, yeah, it, it's like a pool method. It's just getting the list of service and it's keeping them as much. Docker is just a wrapper uh, on the Docker Swarm API. Yes. Um, but yeah, let, let's try to be cool. And uh, it's an application that is trying to serve a REST API interface for uh, easy, use, easy scalability model. And um, yeah, like if you are going, to, if you are trying to implement auto scaling in Docker Swarm, probably you are going to create a HTTP daemon that can handle this kind of stuff. Uh, Orbiter is already done. Okay, <laughs> I, I usually have some T-shirt. The sides are no, like I'm not going to ask for. <laughs> it <to> be. <laughs> If it's not your size, you just look for a friend. <laughs> okay. No, That's not my fault. Don't 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 <laughs> okay. I'm just going to take the chair. I, I put together a short demo. You can find the code. Oh, let's, let's see. Obviously, the, the, or the, uh, the project is open source as, and uh, it's in. Oh, I don't have internet. Um, <laughs> do we have a Wi Fi? Sorry. Sorry. Do we have the Wi Fi? I just. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's right here. Oh, where's the mark? How do we get the phosphorus? <laughs> You can just no the one the one down here. CS guess has got no password. Uh, 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 go back to the Google comments. CS guest. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, it's open source on GitHub, uh, Jonas slash Orbiter, and you can see the code. We have a nice logo that uh, a guy from the community put together. Uh, it's great. And uh, it's better than the project itself. Um, <coughs> and uh, yeah, you can see all the code. But uh, what I'm looking for here is the country slash swarm folder. Uh, it contains a uh, easy to use demo that you can try. And I'm going to run this code in my laptop and we can try together. And just. Uh, there is a make file and there is making it. The making it script is uh, creating, is using Docker Machine to create a three node uh, cluster. I can show you the script. The script. It's very simple. I'm creating a three node cluster in my laptop and uh, I'm creating, I, I'm configuring them to join a Docker Swarm. Uh, if you didn't, if you never see Docker Swarm in action, mm -hmm. I'm uh, in the first node, I'm in, uh, creating the cluster, Swarming it is uh, in, initializing the cluster and uh, like I, I need to specify the advertised address because in my machine I have more than one. Uh, network interface and, and I need to say which interface it's going to use uh, to route communication. And the other two nodes, two or three, are just joining the cluster. 
every every time that you need the swarm cluster, you have a token. Two, two token, one is to join workers and one is to join manager. They are different and you need to um, communicate to the node which to the token because it's going to use it for mutual TLS and identification and authorization. Uh, after that, no, nah, that's it. I'm just going to echo some information. As you can see, the log is Docker, Docker machine, and at the end we have the information about to configure my Docker service, Docker node, Docker node. LS shows that we have three nodes in the cluster, and the swarm one is the leader. That's it. Now I can show you. The stack. What I'm doing? Uh, I'm deploying uh, Orbiter as a, uh, as a service here. I'm exposing. Uh, I copy paste the same that I uh, show you in the slide. I'm I'm uh, mounting the void the socket in the container. I'm adding the constraints. I also added some limitation, just be, uh, some li limit in my container, just because I think that if you're using container without limits. You are doing something wrong, and I always say things. Um, I'm also uh, uh, running micro, that is another service, is a HTTP ser uh, service that exposes some information from the system itself. I'm just using it as a, a target for the autoscaler. It's just an example. And uh, oh yeah, they they are in the same network because they need to communicate with each other. Orbiter needs to communicate. No, that's, that's not true. I don't know why they understand it. Uh, like, you don't need to have them in the same network. Okay, I create a make file and uh, I'm going to, yeah, to run this command. Docker stack deploy and I, I'm deploying the composer, the composer file. Now, I have some shortcuts in the make file, but they are all uh, values. I can run this. Okay. Uh, this is just a shortcut, but you can see that I'm running, the, the make file is running docker service fs, and we have the list of uh, uh, services, two services. One is the orbiter that has one replica. And the other one is micro that has three replicas. At the moment, the, no one of the um, micro stackers are working uh, because it's zero to three. And uh, Orbiter is already up and running. It's zero to three because micro has the head check configured and Swarm is checking for the autoscaler before making the task available. And I, the, the second command in, is Docker stack ps stack to complicate things, stack is the, the docker stack, yes, name of the stack, my, my stack is called stack, because I'm crazy, <laughs> and um, <coughs> yeah, and as you can see there are, there is the list of uh, um, running containers. Uh, okay, if I try the time, yeah, you can see that now there are three or three uh, micro running. And uh, I don't remember. <coughs> yeah. If I go in, for uh, eight thousand, you can see this is the orbiter application. It's well designed, super cool, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you can see. Network, uh, the, the network, like it, it's an inspector, it just tells information about, about the underlying server. In my case, it's the underlying containers. And uh, uh, now, Docker Swarm used, uh, used a round robin, to, uh, round robin algorithm to sh uh, share traffic between containers. It means that at some point, my expectation is to see the IP changed, but it's not changing, but I can't I can control this uh, because it's random. Uh, anyway, we have the service running, and the important thing is to remember is that we have three tasks for our, for uh, um, the micro for my application. 
I, I'm not going to spin up InfluxDB Capacitor or Prometheus and the other manager because the chain is going to be too long and to understand, but let's say that you have your specific uh, uh, time series database or the place where you're storing your relic, the place that you are storing all your metrics, and you have a way to say, uh, automatic way to say, okay, if the CPU is higher than 70%, you should notify me on Slack. In this case, you are you are not just notifying me on Slack, but you are also sending uh, uh, a HTTP URL to Orbiter. And uh, the code is uh, looks like something like this: is uh, post to Orbiter handler the name of your uh, auto swarm to identify that it's something that Orbiter is <coughs> out of the depth and uh, the name of the service and up and down. In this example, I'm going to run make scale up and uh, my expectation is to get a 200 and it's working and uh, my expectation is also to have four tasks because I asked Orbiter to scale up my service and I can do that more than one and I would have Six tasks now, or I can go down, 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 down again, and maybe, maybe I start with oh, cool down. oh, cool down. Thank you. <laughs> Whew, I was just scared of myself. <laughs> and um, yeah, anyway, it's going was well, six now probably it's three, and I can go down. Um, we have some safety check, you cannot go less than zero, because uh, I don't know how to handle that. <laughs> and uh, we are also implementing other true label like, like max and min, uh, in order to say, okay, this service can go maximum to 100 tasks. That's the idea. And that's the end of my presentation. That's it. Slides will be available, and the, everything is open source. Also, micro is open. Also, micro is, is open source. No second presentation. Slide. Also, micro is open source. Is in my uh, GitHub account. Uh, if you have questions, tell me them here or in.